Hey everyone. Hey everyone. So let's talk about uh, putting orthographic views, uh, you know, inside 3D Studio Max so that we can work from them. So I'm going to go in a little bit more detail than I did in class. So the first thing I need you to do is look up a reference image that you like. Uh, I'm going to look up the Master Sword right now, which I probably should have prepared beforehand. Um, but just find a front view, a side view of the sword. Uh, that's kind of what we're looking for. Um, you can do this for characters as well. Doesn't really matter. Um, so let's do that. So I got my image saved. So I'm going to create a plane in 3D Studio Max in one of the views, uh, preferably the front view, because this will be the front of our weapon. And I'll just make it any size I want to. And if you look in our views, there we go. I'll even turn this to a realistic view or a default shaded view. And we have this. So if you push M on your keyboard, you should load in the uh, material editor. Now in your material editor, you might have uh, another section, a small section, which says default, but uh, just add a standard material. So you could just push M on your keyboard and you can add a standard material just by double clicking standard and you get the standard material. You can then double click the standard material to get its settings on the right hand side. Now we can change the color of the standard material by going into the diffuse, which is locked to the ambient as well. And you'll see if we change the color, both colors change. And the color on our material changes as well. I'm just going to turn this a bright red for now. So now that we have our material and the color we want, we have to assign it to our object. So inside 3D Studio Max, we click our object and we right click on our material and we click assign material to selection. So now we see that our object is red. So that means the material we just created and changed the color of is attached to our object. We need to now load the image. To do that, instead where we uh, clicked on diffuse right here, we changed it to red. There's a little box beside it. And it says none right now. That's the map box or material box. And it will load up maps that we choose to you know, tell it to load up. There are a lot of different maps in 3D Studio Max by default. But what we want is bitmap. That means it's going to load an image from our computer into 3D Studio Max and attach it to this material. So I double click bitmap and now I can load a bitmap from, you know, wherever I need I have my image saved. So I'm going to find my image and I see my master sword here. And now that I have this master sword in, I can see that there's a red line attaching it to the diffuse color box, which means that that will be the new texture on top of our 3D models. You can even double click on the little image here to see a clearer image of what you're looking at, as well as you can double click on the little sphere here to expand that as well. That might give you a little bit easier time to look at the objects, uh, the texture on the 3D objects there. So we've assigned this material, which is red, to this object, but it's still not showing us the actual texture. So what we need to do is right click on the material standard how we click to assign material to selection and we need to go down to an option called show shaded material and viewport and now we can actually see our material showing up here now sometimes you won't see uh, the image on the backhand side normally it will only show on the front side of a polygon so that's fine if you can see it on both sides great but if you can only see it on one side that's fine just make sure that the front uh, is uh, you know set to the front so we have our Legend of Zelda swords here, which is great. Uh, so now that the material is signed, here's the next step. So I'm going to move this a little back. And let's say you had a left or right view on the same image or a different image. Well, all you'd have to do is create another plane or just copy this plane by shift and rotating it. And it will create a duplicate and then ask you, hey, is this copy OK? Copy instance or reference, just make it a copy. And you can call it plane 2. And then you can move and rotate it wherever you'd like to set up a good left or right view. And to set up, so you, now you would have your front view and you'd have your left and right view there. Which makes it an easy setup for yourself. Now, two things. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about object properties. Because you guys may want to never touch these again, right? If you're 3D modeling and you're playing around with some objects and... It's going to be annoying if you keep clicking on the reference images all the time. So we need to freeze them. 
So you can freeze them by going into the object layer manager here and where it says frozen, you can just hit the little snowflake and freeze them. The problem we run into when they're frozen is they turn gray. So we need to change object properties. To do that, we can either right click in our uh, object layer manager and go to display properties to change the way it displays. Or we can right click here, which I'd like to do, so I'd like you to do this. Right click on the actual object and you'll find a selection. You'll see freeze, hide, unhide, and you'll see object properties. If you click on that, you're gonna see a whole bunch of settings we have for our 3D objects. And one of those settings is already checkmarked called show frozen in gray. Okay, if you click this off, the next time you freeze the object, you won't uh, see in gray, you'll actually see the texture and everything still. Uh, for those who want to as well, you can actually set your texture to see through. And you can set your 3D models to see through as well, so that you can see what you're doing as you're modeling. So I'm gonna turn off frozen and gray for that one. I'm gonna turn off frozen and gray for this one. And then I'm gonna grab both of these and I'm gonna freeze them. You see they're now frozen and I can't select them at all, but I can still grab my objects and play around with them. Now, I'm gonna change this realistic view. I'm gonna to go to shaded. So the biggest problem we see is when we're trying to 3D model now, um, we overlap our reference and we can't, I mean, what am I supposed to, I can't look at the sword, I can't see it, I gotta like, I can't even go around here really and do it. Um, so what I need to do, or what I can do, sorry, is in object properties, I can make my object see-through. And now you can see, I can see through the object and I can see the sword behind it. So when I'm editing and I add edit poly, to my object, I can now modify it and match my shape 100%. And obviously if you have a side view as well, you should work from your side views as well and try and match your side view as much as possible as well. Obviously this sword doesn't have a side view, but you get the idea. You just work from the different viewports and try and make uh, your object as close as possible as what it is. And so that's how you freeze and unfreeze with still showing the textures and make your object see through that so you can model better. Um, other than that, I think you guys got the rest of the tools in the different videos. Please check them out. Don't forget your spline tools. Don't forget your edit poly. And uh, have a great time. I hope this see through and uh, re orthographic reference tutorial has helped you out. And uh, just let me know if you have any questions. All right. Thank you very much.